Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr. Southern. This is the fourth lesson on geometric sequences, and in this video I'm going to be explaining how to find the number of terms required to exceed a certain sum. So we have in the series 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24, etc. What is the smallest number of terms required for the sum to exceed 1.5 billion? So, first of all, what type of series is this? Well, it's geometric. How do we know it's geometric? Because we're watching a video called Geometric, Mr. Southern. Ah, no, it's because you multiply by a constant number, a common ratio to get the next term in each, uh, next term each time. And in this case, we can see that that common ratio R equals two. Um, and the first term is A equals three. Uh, now, we're being asked about a sum, uh, so the smallest number of terms required for the sum uh, to exceed 1.5 million. So we're going to be using the formula the sum to n equals a times by 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Uh, so let's begin by using that formula with the values that we know. So a is 3, 1 minus 2 to the power of n over 1 minus 2 exceed greater than more than so the inequality symbol is going in this direction initially uh, 1.5 million so 1 5 and then five zeros now what you must not do is multiply this bracket out because what people tend to do is they'll say oh it's 3 minus 6 to the power of n and it's not you cannot times that 2 by that 3 uh, so what we do instead is we say that uh, 3 lots of 1 minus 2 to the power of n over negative 1 is greater than 1.5 million. We're then going to multiply both sides of this by negative 1. So we're going to have 3 lots of 1 minus 2 to the power of n is less than negative 1.5 million and that inequality has changed direction because I've multiplied both sides by a negative. So again I said we're not going to expand those brackets out what we're going to do is we're going to divide by 3 uh, so we're going to have 1 minus 2 to the power of n is less than negative 500,000 dividing this by 3 as well. We're going to subtract that 1 so we're going to have negative 2 to the power of n is less than negative 500,000 and 1. And then because we've got two negatives, we can divide by both sides by negative 1 to get 2 to the power of n. Now, crucially, that will change the direction of the inequality. So 2 to the power of n is now greater than 500,001. Uh, so I'll just jot that again up here so that we can work from that. 2 to the power of n is greater than 500,001. And now it's a case of how do we solve for n. Now, you might be tempted to say, oh, yeah, I see this, Mr. Sudden. It's base power, so it's log base 2 of 500,001, and that's going to give me my answer. And that's great except that we need to keep the inequality symbol in there and we need to know, well, is it more than this number or is it less than this number? So my preference, rather than jumping to this, is to take logs of both sides and say log 2 to the power of n is greater than log of 500,000 and 1. We can then use the powers rule of logarithms and place the n in front of log 2 still greater than log 500,001. Now log 2 is a number, which means that we can divide both sides by log 2 to get log 500,001 over log 2. Now let's just pause for a minute to check that this is sensible. We've been asked for the number of terms required to exceed a certain value. Now you would expect that to be after we've had a certain number of terms. So more than this number of terms. And this inequality is saying that n, the number of terms, is more than this number. So we're happy with that. That makes sense at this stage. 
Uh, so all I need to do now is using my calculator and the uh, log button um, it defaults to base 10 but it doesn't actually matter what um, base you use um, and if you've done natural logarithms learn it will work with learn as well uh, and what we get is uh, n is greater than 15 point uh, no hang on I've not put enough zeros in there there you go n is greater than 18.93, etc, etc. So let's just think about what n represents. n represents the number of terms in a sequence, so that can only be an integer, a whole number. So if n is greater than 18.93, then n must equal 19. And if you just wanted to check, it's worth doing, you could say sum to 19, is uh, a, which is 3, oh, uh, multiplied by 1 minus 2 to the power of 19, all over 1 minus 2, and just check that's greater than 1.5 million. Uh, I'm just going to do it now, so 3 multiplied by 1 minus 2 to the power of 19, uh, all over negative 1, uh, comes out as just over 1.5 million, and so there we go. Just while I'm here, something to be aware of is if this had been a decreasing series, so your common ratio had been a fraction, then what would have happened is at this stage here, if you have a fraction, think about what is log of a number less than one. And let's say, for example, if instead of two this had been one third, you'd had log one third there. Well, log of one third is negative. So if you've been dividing in this next step by log of one third, as well as dividing by log of one third, the inequality would have to change direction because you're dividing by a negative. And it's little tricks like that that make it important to just consider at this stage, am I comfortable that the inequality is going in the right direction for the context of the question? There you go. Job done. Thanks for your company.